Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done talking about or recapping recent WNBA games, and now we're going to recap the Aramco Team Series. Before we begin, I wanted to remind you guys to like and follow the show and to become a part of our show to tip and donate using the link gsmcpodcast.net. Also, this link does put your questions at the top of the list so that I see them and they get read at on the air so you get that you know fun little interactive aspect of the gsmc sports network and of course your support and help is really appreciated and it makes a huge difference i also wanted to remind you guys to stay till the end of the show to hear about um some interesting competitive aspects between the usa swimmers and australian swimmers heading into the olympics okay so now that we got that out of the way let's get started talking about the aramco team series this golf competition is part of the Ladies European Tour, or LET, or LET, whatever you want to call it. I call it the LET, but apparently people call it the LET. I don't know. I've only heard people calling it the LET, so I only call it the LET. Anyway, this competition is very different. It consists of five events in three different continents. And on July 3rd to the 5th, we had round three in London at the Saturian Club. The golfers compete for a $1 million purse. Hayo, Joe, Kim, and Alexandra Fosterling won the first two rounds this year. It's also a team event in a way, so I will hopefully make this the most comprehensible as possible because with names and teams, it can be very confusing sometimes. <laughs> so let me first talk about Nelly Corda. She was supposed to compete in this tournament, and I was really looking forward to watching her, you know, as one always is. She was supposed to, you know, be one of the leading um, contenders to possibly be in the top 10. Obviously, she's Nelly Corda, but she had to drop out because she got bit by a dog. She said the incident happened the Saturday before while she was in Seattle. Corda said in response to a withdrawal from the competition, quote, I need time to receive treatment and recover fully. I apologize to the LET, the sponsors, and my fans for my absence. Thank you for your understanding, and I look forward to returning to the course soon, unquote. While Corda's ploy has had a bit of a rough stretch recently, she started this year on one of the hottest tiers in recent memory, winning six times on the LPGA Tour before the calendar turned to June. Corda will need to heal up pretty quickly and i really hope she does as there are some huge events coming up on the women's golf calendar the umundi evian championship a major kicks off on july 11th while the olympics tournament in france is slated to go down in early august so hopefully she will be okay by then um i am hoping for a steady recovery for her now let's begin recapping the competition During day one, Ireland's Leona Maguire fired a 7 under par 66 to take the sole lead. With four birdies on her front nine, I keep losing my voice, I'm so sorry guys. With four birdies on her front nine, three on her back nine, and an impressive up and down to save par on 18, Maguire broke away from Austria's Sarah Schober, holding a one-shot lead. Maguire's brilliance also drove her team to the top of the team leaderboard, tied top alongside Team Holland Team Iterios on 14 under par, heading into the second and final day of the team competition. The world number 32, who is set to represent the Republic in Ireland at the Summer of Olympics in Paris, was full of praise for her team, which included Liz Young and Marta Sanbrario. Narita Iterois, who sits T3 on the individual leaderboard scored four birdies on her front nine to help her team leap into first place early in the day, having started in the morning. Sarah Schober, who missed the cut in last week's VP Bank Swiss Open, carded seven birdies in her round of 600 par and sits just one shot back from the lead overnight. Rolled number eight and the favorite last week, Charlie Hole, was forced to withdraw only after six holes played two due to a shoulder injury. It was very unfortunate that Hole would have to miss out on the rest of the competition, especially because I was really looking forward to seeing her make it on the top ten. But it's best that she focuses on her injury before the Olympics come around. During day two, Maguire still was absolutely dominating the competition. She took a two-shot lead into the final round. Maguire added a second round of 72 to her opening 66 at Centurion Club to reach eight under par with Solheim Cup teammate Georgia Hall, her nearest challenger following her a second consecutive 70. After making a boogie on her first hole of the day, the 10th Maguire responded with a birdie on the 13th, only to give the shot straight back to the next. 
Birdies on the third and sixth ensured McGuire remained on top of the leaderboard as Hall suffered a poor finish to around the roll number 38, racing to the turn in 31, but coming home in 39 after dropping shots on the seventh and eighth. The other Irish competitor in the field, Lauren Walsh, carded a 75 to go along with her opening 73. Starting on the 10th, Walsh had a double bogey on 12 and boogies on 11, on 14 and 16, sorry, but her round improved across her final nine holes where she picked up two shots. Her two or final saw her through to the final round. So speaking of the final round, on day three, McGuire eagled the final hole to take the win of her first ever Ladies European Tour title. So she made history for her. McGuire, who has been LPGA Tour wins and two victory, who has two LPGA Tour wins and two victories on the Symmetra Tour, sorry, I just want to make that clear, carded a final round 73 to finish at eight under par and pipe. Saints Maria Hernandez by one. She becomes the first ever Irish woman to win on the LUT, actually, which I did not know that until like <laughs> this weekend. So I was like pretty sure that she has became the first one. It looked like Hernandez had done enough for at least a playoff thanks to a boogie fi free five under 68 until McGuire struck a wow, wonderful hybrid into the par five 18th hole at the Saturn Club to set up a trickle eagle, tricky eagle putt from inside 10 feet. McGuire's left to right effort found the bottom of the cup to steal the title away from the Spaniard in a topsy-turvy level par final round that included a double boogie, three boogies, three birdies, and the closing eagle. The stars of the LET and LPGA head to France next week for the fourth major of the season, the Evian Championship, where Celine Boudier defends the title she won last year by six. The field is set to be stacked, although Lexi Thompson is set to skip the major once again. The next Aramco Team Series event takes place at a yet-to-be-announced location in Asia from the 4th to the 6th of October. So to end this segment, I'm going to go over the individual scores and the team scores. Starting with the individual scores, first, like I went over, was Leona McGuire at 66, and second was Sarah Schnober representing Austria at 67. Tied at third at 69 was Noria Iteras from Spain, Megan Dennis from England, and Chloe Williams from Wales. Tied at six at 70 was Laura Ferenstark from Germany, and Hannah Screen and Georgia Hall, both from England. Tied at ninth with a score of 71 was Moye Folk from Sweden, Annabelle Demonk from England, Stephanie Curico from Austria, Anna Nordquist from England, Liz Young also from England, and Anne Charlotte Moore from France. In 16th place was a score of 72 was Ines Lelelech from Morocco, Marianne Skartnord from Norway, Shannon Tan from Singapore, Kim Murtro from Switzerland, Nata Nasty. Guys, I am so sorry with like that I am butchering some of these names. I sincerely apologize. I'm just like so bad at pronouncing names. That is like a serious problem that I have. Nastasia Nadud from France, Leanne Pace and Nicole Garcia from Russia, and Silla Kilker from Sweden. Tied at 24th place with a score of 73 was Maria Hernandez from Maria. Maria. Oh my gosh, Maria? That is so weird. I know how to pronounce Maria. See, like that's the thing, is like I will pronounce names like correctly in my head, but then as soon as I like open my mouth, it's like not even close at all. And I'm really sorry about that. Maria Hernandez from Spain, Fernanda Larry from Mexico, Fatima Fernandez Cano from Spain, Allison Lee from the US, Dorothy Forbridge from Norway, Ursula Wickstrom from Finland, Agath. Suzanne from France, Patricia Isabel Smith from Germany, Lily May Humphreys from England, Cassandra Alexander from Russia. I'm so sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background. She is she is not very scary, but she thinks she is. Virginia Elena Carta from Italy. Carrie Sharia. Okay, so I actually know a girl who pronounced her name Kira this way, but then I also hear people pronounce it Chiaria, and I can't figure out if but we're going to go with Car like Kira. Okay, sorry, guys. Kira Termolini from Switzerland, Tavissa Malik from India, Hannah Burke and Annabelle Fuller from England, and Laura Walsh from Ireland. For the teams, Team and Adad was in first, representing France. On the team was Natasia, Nastasia, Nadad, Christina Napoliova, Maria Pratt, and George Brookbanks. The second place team was Team Hall representing England. The team consisted of Georgia Hall, Hannah Burke, Lena Belam, Bell Monty, and Shane Hart Jones. And third was Team McGuire representing Ireland. And that team consisted of Leona McGuire, Liz Young, Marta Sansbarro, Barrario, and Yana Wilson. So we're now going to move into the next segment where we talk about the Golden Boot race and the National Women's Soccer League. Um, before we begin, I just want to say that 
The Aramico team series is more focused on your individual performance. I feel like, like that's where most recognition gets made, especially considering that Leona McGuire was the first ever person from Ireland to win an LET um, competition or event. So the individual scores kind of get more recognition, but the team is still important because it, it adds up in the final. So now we're going to move into the next segment for talking about the NWSL Golden Boot Race. And we're going to take a short break before we begin. So I will see you guys really soon and I will get to you guys right back after the break. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. 